I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing this Saker Mini Handheld Chainsaw. Now I know you're probably thinking already, why am I reviewing this tiny little thing when obviously here at the homestead we're probably using something a little bit more serious. This is a chainsaw that I tend to use as an Echo Timberwolf, and uh, this is great for, you know, all the things that we do here, but every single uh, different tool has a different strength has different weaknesses. Now the Echo is great for cutting through really large logs and you know it does a really good job of it, but if I'm going to be going and working somewhere where there's going to be people around, uh, like recently last year I had to do some work at a local uh, community beach and there were kids around and I needed to chop up some logs there and it would have been really obnoxious using a really loud chainsaw. I always use, wear hearing protection when I uh, wear that to you know protect my ears so I don't have ringing and I'm not all like, huh, huh, what'd you say later on? Uh, so, you know, they make a lot of noise, and an electric chainsaw is a, is a tool that you can use in a situation where there's going to be people around and you don't want to be really, you know, freaking obnoxious about it. And a tiny handheld chainsaw is, uh, you know, another tool that has, you know, strengths and weaknesses. And the main strength of this tool, I think, is as an introduction into chainsaws. One of the uh, big issues with people uh, when they, well, it's not an issue with the people, I'm going to say, but one of the big issues that uh, comes up when people are thinking about getting into a chainsaw, you know, people would love to be able to, uh, you, know, you know, reclaim lumber from their land or, well, not lumber necessarily, but firewood from their land. But a lot of people are afraid of these big chainsaws. This is really big. It's pretty loud. Occasionally, you know, if, if you don't watch it, sometimes the chain will flip off and you got to be careful about, uh, you know, it's a serious, it's a serious tool. There are serious, uh, you know, safety issues with it. Now, I've never been uh, seriously injured uh, or injured at all uh, for, with a chainsaw, but I can see why people tend to be a little bit nervous around them. And that, uh, that prevents people oftentimes from even getting into working with chainsaws at all. And I think it's a real shame because a chainsaw is kind of a, a it's sort of a simple tool. It, it's sort of like the, uh, you know, if you ever go to a grocery store, they oftentimes have these little uh, conveyor belts at the checkout area. You put your groceries on the conveyor belt uh, and they you know, bring them down to the, the cashier. Uh, and a chainsaw is pretty much just like a conveyor belt, except instead of having a piece of you know, rubber uh, mat that goes around on the conveyor belt, it has uh, you know, well, these little, uh, this little chain and these little teeth, which aren't particularly in, of them, in and of themselves sharp. They are, uh, you know, damaging to wood when they're flying around really fast. But uh, you know, if you think about it, it's just it's just a conveyor belt that brings these little semi-sharp teeth around and uh, pulls out little chunks of wood one bit at a time. Each little tooth grabs a little bit more along the way. So if you break it down like that, it doesn't have to be something really uh, frightening for people. But still, people are really reluctant to get into chainsaws. And something like this, I think, could be a good introduction for people who want to get into chainsaws because it is, it's tiny, it's not going to terrify you, and uh, I think it's a great way of kind of um, demystifying chainsaws and getting rid of some of the, the fear factor uh, that is related to them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there are jobs that come up where, you know, I don't need the giant chainsaw. Like recently I needed to uh, get another roosting bar for the chickens in my chicken coop, and I needed to... Uh, you know, chop up some smaller diameter limbs. Uh, they were only like one and a half inches, two inches or so. And this is the perfect tool for it. Now, could I have used the larger chainsaw? Yeah, I could have, uh, but it's heavier, it's more cumbersome. And, you know, honestly, to start this one up, you press this little safety button and then pull the trigger to start that one up. Um, well, you know, sometimes it just doesn't want to start up. You know, you're yanking at it. And, you know, for life of me, sometimes I have a little bit of trouble getting that one going. So, you know, there are strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons to every tool. And the real pro to this tool, I think, is getting people comfortable with the idea of chainsaws. Because if you use this for a while, it's going to get you familiar with the idea. you got this little conveyor belt going on in here. And, you know, you can see the way that it, it works through wood. And you can kind of graduate from this up to something bigger. And I know you could just tell people to just like suck it up and jump right into the big chainsaw, but the reality is a lot of people aren't gonna do that. So if you have someone in your life that you would like to uh, help them to get into uh, using, you know, the real full-size chainsaws, 
this is a really great, uh, you know, it's a gateway drug for getting into chainsaws. So uh, we're going to try this out. I've used it a few times. It works really, really well. I, I compare it uh, to the functionality of my uh, kind of full-size electric chainsaw. I have an electric chainsaw made by Greenworks, and I love that thing. It's nice and quiet. Uh, the only issue that I have with that one is that the oil uh, feed on it uh, started, uh, well, it clogged up, and uh, in order to get oil onto the bar of that one, I have to, like, just dip it into uh, a can, and because of that, it's just kind of a pain in the butt, so that's why I use this gas-powered one, which isn't clogged up yet. Uh, this one uh, doesn't even have uh, the potential for clogging up, because this is something interesting about the small one. It doesn't have an oil reservoir in it, and I'll show you how you oil it in a little bit. Battery goes on, and at this point, it's ready to go. Right, just like that. And this is how you oil it. They give you a little thing of oil. You don't have to use this kind of oil. Any kind of oil will do. You get a whole gallon if you wanted to. That'll last you the lifetime of this uh, tool for sure. You just apply a little bit of oil to the uh, the chain. And this works totally fine. Like I said, this is what I do when the oil feed on my uh, on my regular chainsaw you know, clogs up. You know, sometimes when that happens, you just got to take it and you, know, you dip it into the uh, the, you know, an oil can or something like that, and, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, but, you know, something like this, it's not like you're going to take this out into the woods and be working with this for eight hours straight in the day. This is like, again, something to kind of get you used to the idea of working with uh, chainsaws. What uh, comes in the kit is the, the saw itself. Uh, it comes pre uh, with a, a blade pre-installed on there. It also comes with a couple of other blades. I believe they threw, yeah, there's two extra blades in here, so you get three total blades in this kit. Uh, it has a little charger, uh, and this is kind of actually neat. Uh, the way the charger works is it plugs directly into the batteries. They just have a little port on the batteries, and it plugs right into the batteries. You get two batteries uh, with it, uh, and the batteries, you know, they have a fairly long um, uh, work time. I'm not sure how many amp hours they have them in, uh, in here. 27 watt hours, 27 watt hours in these. It also comes with some safety glasses, uh, which I'm not going to be using for this demonstration, although it is a good idea. I mean, I, I routinely will get stuff flecked up in my eye, but I'm, I'm just going to be a idiot macho man for just for this demonstration. It comes with some gloves, which I'm also not going to use, although this is pressure treated wood that I'm, I'm working with, and I usually do like to have gloves on when I work with pressure treated. Although th these gloves, I wouldn't say these are the best gloves in the world. Um, a splinter could definitely go through the gloves that come in here. But it's, it's kind of a basic kit. They have uh, some uh, tools uh, for uh, you know getting the chain off and uh, you know doing maintenance on it. And a manual. And the, the kit that it comes in uh, is a pretty good kit. Uh, only issue with it uh, is that uh, the hinge on the back is just a thin piece of plastic, and you know, eventually that's gonna probably uh, break, and then you're gonna have like a, uh, uh, you have two halves of a case, and you'll have to kind of figure that out. But I imagine it'll probably last a fair bit of time. So what I'm gonna do is just demo uh, cutting through this log here. This is a piece of pressure treated wood that I uh, am gonna be using for some fence posts. Uh, it's a 10 foot long uh, section, and I need to cut them into five foot, uh, long lengths. Uh, eventually I'm going to be putting um, metal bars up on the bottom and the metal bar is going to go into the ground so e even though it's pressure treated, I just don't like the idea of pressure treated uh, wood being in contact with the ground. One, it makes it so that the pressure treated wood uh, lasts longer because even pressure treated wood when it's in the ground eventually it's going to rot out. Uh, and two, uh, if I'm growing any kind of a crop, like I am planning on doing some grape vines around these, uh, this fence I'm making, uh, if you have the pressure treated wood down right in the ground and the grapevines are kind of growing around the post, you know, you get uh, the, the roots, uh, not the vines, the, the roots of the, uh, the grapevine growing around your post underground, you know, they're going to be getting nutrients from the post itself. And the post is impregnated with chemicals that are uh, made to be toxic, to, you know, impede life and growth and all that kind of stuff. So for that reason, I'm, I'm cutting them in half and I'm going to have uh, the bottom section that goes into the ground be metal, but the first step is to cut them in half. The other thing is that these are 20 bucks each and I'm able to get two posts out of each one instead of just one post. So it's like half the cost per post. So we're going to do a cut right here. This is five feet from that end. And uh, at, the, at, at this junction right here, it is, well, let's find out exactly what the thickness is just so you can have a sense of this. The blade on this is six inches and I'm going to be cutting through a section that's uh, just about four and a quarter inches in diameter. It's uh, not the best setup here. I, I elevated up off the ground so you guys could see it better. But once I start getting through here, both ends are going to want to go down. And uh, you can watch me wrestle with it a little bit. So I'm taking a hit for the team so you guys can see it elevated up off the ground. Here we go. Hey, I'm 
sorry, I just want to interrupt this video before it's over because I was running the saw a little bit uh, after I shot that earlier video and I still think it's uh, very useful and you know everything I said in that, that video, uh, you know, I stand by uh, still. But I noticed something about this and I feel like I should mention it to you guys. In that uh, regards, the alignment of the chain here and your fingers down here. They've got this little guard here and this is it. I'm not really sure what this is intended to protect you from uh, because if this chain ever breaks uh, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of fling around like this because uh, the motion of the chain is going around that conveyor belt remember we talked about it's going around like this and if it ever broke you'd have like let's say it broke right here this part of the chain is going to fling around because this thing's all moving it's getting pulled back down in here this chain's going to fling around and it's going to flop down in this direction and with your fingers down here it's going to lay right across your fingers and it's still going to be getting pulled up into the uh, the uptake here so uh, when they made the the guard on this uh, again I'm not really sure what the guards protecting you from here because the, the blade is here the blade is not here if the blade was here you could say you know okay well the blades gonna you know if it ever breaks it's gonna hit this guard and your fingers are gonna be protected that said I'd be like well you know can we make that guard a little bit a little bit wider because uh, it's like a centimeter and a half there um, but there there is no there is no guard over here and that's something to be uh, you know uh, aware of that if you're using this and the chain breaks uh, and you know I don't it's not like I use a chainsaw every single day but I use you know every year I'm using it to you know cut firewood I've never had a chain split on me so I don't know how uh, frequent that is but it is a thing that can happen and if this thing does snap it's gonna go right across your fingers now if you've got some heavy-duty gloves not the types of, he of gloves that they you know have in this kit if you have some real you know good thick leather gloves yeah I, I think you'd probably be fine uh, yeah, probably but um, you know that, that that is one downside with the way that this thing was uh, was designed is that the the uh, the guard is off axis from where the uh, the chain is but again you know uh, chains splitting it's never anything that's ever happened to me I you know so I it doesn't seem like it's a super frequent event um, but yeah I just wanted to wanted to mention that the, the only thing that you know does occasionally happen to be is like my chain will uh, slip off of the uh, uh, you know, off the bar entirely. Um, and, then, and then it will kind of flop down. So, you know, under any circumstance, I think you definitely want to be wearing, you know, some real gloves, not the ones that come in this kit. It's like some real gloves using this thing. But, you know, aside from that, all the good things I said about it, uh, you know, still hold up. You know, the batteries, you know, they, they last really well. It's good for cutting through stuff uh, that's, you know, you know, that big, uh, you know, up to that size. And again, this is like your introductory chainsaw. It gets you comfortable, or, you know, I guess if it cut your fingers off, it's not gonna make you feel all that comfortable. But, you know, presuming all, all that uh, goes fine, you know, it's gonna make people feel a little bit more comfortable with the platform, and then they can graduate up to like a quote unquote real chainsaw, uh, you know, after they, uh, you know, kind of find the limitations of this thing, and then they, uh, they wanna, you know, uh, go up to the, uh, like a, take a step up. So that's it, let's go back to the video. There we go, went through nice and easy. So I think that is a pretty decent tool. Uh, you know, for, for jobs like this, uh, you know, it works just as well as the full size chainsaw does. Uh, for you know going into the woods if you need to just uh, trim a few branches or something like that you know if they're if they're uh, low-hanging kind of branches you know it's gonna work just fine but like I said I think the primary benefit of a tool like this is that it is it's like an entryway into chainsaws because you know something like this it's, it's not gonna be uh, it's not gonna be frightening people as much and they can get used to kind of the feel of a chainsaw you know how it accelerates I think that this would be a great uh, kind of entryway into all that uh, you know the price isn't isn't too bad either and uh you know it just uh it's the kind of thing that if you can just tease people a little bit with the kind of uh the tools and the freedom that they can get by living this kind of country lifestyle where if uh you know a tree falls in their yard uh you know they don't have to feel as though they have to like you know go out and hire somebody to take care of that they can take care of that themselves you know if they have a tool like this they're going to get a little bit of a, that kind of uh that kind of buzz uh of feeling like uh you know it, it it, it felt great that like I didn't have to you know depend on anyone else to take care of that. I was able to do that, and the more and more people get that kind of feeling in their life, the more addictive that is. Where you you start uh, you know just feeling um, 
uh, you know, a curiosity about well, what are other things that, you know, society has told me that, you know, I can't do that maybe I actually can do. And, uh, you know, from there, it just kind of can metastasize. <laughs> Yeah, metastasize is another great, uh, you know, analog word. It can metastasize out into, you know, other parts of their life and, you know, get them curious about all, all sorts of other things where, uh, you know, they might have more capability, they might have more potential than, you know, the world oftentimes wants us to believe where, when the world wants us to have to depend on, you know, society, depend on businesses to come in and solve our problems for us and charge us along the way. That's it. I hope you found this review helpful and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, here's another video that you might enjoy. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen. They help to support the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list, the link's below.